What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to place a location marker in the world in Unreal Engine. It's going to be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into our third person character blueprint or whatever character blueprint you're using. So what we're going to do here is basically when we press a key, do a line trace and basically line trace is just an invisible line that will go from one point to another. And when we hit the location, we'll go ahead and put our marker there. So let's say, for example, that I hit the end key. All right, we can put whatever key you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and do so with the end. Um, so what we're going to do here is just this node called the line trace by channel. And like I just mentioned, it will just create a line from a starting point to an end point. So our starting point will be our current camera location. So what we can do is get our photo camera is to get weld location. And then we can just plug that into the star. Now for the end point, what we're going to do is get the point where our camera is looking at. And then in the forward vector, we're going to add a direction. Well, basically a, an offset, you know, so it's in front of our camera. So we can just get the weld rotation. And then what we can do is just get the forward vector. So now we know where our camera is looking. And now what we can do is just add that offset. So multiply this by a value. You can just right click, go into convert ping into a float. So it's a nice number. And we can put it for example here um 3000. So basically this is the distance that will be allowed to mark. And now what we can do is just get our get wall location and add it with our um, offset. So now we can just put it into the endpoint and it will just create a nice, uh, nice line trace. So let's put the debug type into for duration so we can quickly go ahead and preview this. Uh, I believe I don't have anything more with the end key so let me just test this. So now if I press play and I press N, as you can see we're doing a line trace from where the camera is looking into the floor. So that's exactly what we want. Great. So now what we need to do is of course get the position and apply our marker. So let's go into the content browser and just right click and create a new blueprint class. This will be our actor. In here, we just say BP underscore, and then we can call this the location marker, for example. You can call it whatever you want. And let's just open this. So this is just an actor because it's just gonna be placed in the scene, and that's it. So in here, what we can do is add this uh, component that has a real engine, which is literally an arrow. And we can just go ahead and select the rotation tool and just rotate it around 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and do so here, minus 90. And then we can just go ahead and I'm going to put the, the snapping point so it's easier for me and just put it outside. So basically it has to be right uh, point. The point needs to be right, like, you know, in the ground. So it's not going through the ground or whatever. It has to be like right over it. Uh, so in here I have just 80 on set as you can see. Now I might need to change the the scale of this so the arrow is bigger, we'll see. But basically let's go into the details panel and make sure that hidden in game is disabled so we will be able to see it. Because if not, it will be disabled by default. So just make sure that it's like that. And also of course, visible, it is true. All right, so now with that, what we can do is go back into a third person character blueprint. And if we have hit it something, so this is true, what we can do is get our out hit. And we can use this node to break the result. And now we have all the parameters from the location, the impact point, and we have hit an actor and so on. In this case, we want to just get the impact location and you spawn an actor from class. Now I need to do it separately, so spawn actor from class. And then the thing is that this requires a transform. So what we can do is right click, split, and just pass in the location here. Now the rotation and scale, we can keep it like this because I mean the rotation doesn't matter for the marker, it's just an arrow, so it doesn't, it's gonna be always looking down. And then for the scale, well, it's just gonna always stay like that, so that's okay. And now in collision handle, I'm gonna say always spawn in all, in all collisions. And with that, it should spawn a, an actor that we set in here, which in this case, we need to set our location marker. So of course, remember to do so. All right, so now if I were to hit play, you will see that when I hit N, uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> we have our arrow here. And of course, I can do it a lot of times. So now, yes, uh, we need to make it a bit bigger. Okay, I just make sure. So what we can do is just get an arrow and do it, I don't know, three times bigger. I don't know how big it will be. I mean, what we can do is just test this. So again, make sure that it is right over the point. And to test this, we're gonna just drag it to the scene. I think that this is pretty good. 
um, yeah, you can play with the values. Maybe 2.7 is a bit better, or 2.5. Yeah, like I said, you can play with the values. For me, it's gonna do it temporary. And of course, you don't have, you're not obliged to use use an arrow. What you can do is also add a static mesh and put whatever type of mesh you want, right? In here, so it doesn't need to be, for example, this, right? <laughs> but you can put whatever mesh you want. But I'm just using this arrow because I mean, it comes with the engine; it's easy to use. Um, so now with that said, I'm also going to go ahead and disable the debug, so we don't need that anymore. So set it to none. And then we will, what we're going to do is just play a sound when we spawn it. So we can use say play sound at location. And then we can just find a nice sound. Now for me, I'm using the third person template with the started content on. So I already have some sounds, but of course you can use whatever you want. And I think this one will just work perfectly for me. And let's plug in the location here. Now, right now, I don't have a sound detonation. That will mean that basically, even though it is spawning in this location, it doesn't matter. It will still play in 2D because to be able to play in 3D in its uh, attenuation. So I do have thrown that, making 3D sounds. So check it out. Anyway, with that, uh, let's also go ahead and make a Niagara effect. So basically, like some particles, real quick. So just right click, go into a Niagara system. And then new system from selected, you say next, and then we have a few options over here that we can choose. And we're going to do is basically a burst. So what we can do is just get a direction burst, just add it, and say finish. And this can be NS marker, whatever. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but uh, let's open this up. All right. So now in here, what we can do is just see how you know, the sprites are being applied. Um, you can do whatever you want on here. I do have some tutorials on iOS if you want to check them out. But basically, I'm gonna limit a bit the burst amount. So I'm gonna spawning in 75. I'm gonna do like maybe 20. That's a bit better. And then also what we can do is go into the initialized particle. Uh, sorry, in the add velocity, and basically do it in another direction. Right now it's doing it in the in the x. But we can just put this in zero and then in z1. So now you can see it's going upwards. And we can do this by basically the reducing the velocity. So maybe 70 and 120. Uh, well, that's too low, but <laughs> maybe 300, 450. I think like 450 would be job. And then here 120. That's okay for me, okay? And you can change the color and the sprite rendering and so on. We can change for a mesh, the material and so on, but that will work for me. So now we can go back here and then say spawn emitter at location. Now we can just go ahead and plug in the location once again. Now in this case, rotation and scale doesn't matter. And this will say auto release in the pool. And now in here, we need to set the MS marker. Um, sorry, it is actually the other note. It's a spawn system at location. I always confused between the two. Basically, one is for the old system and one is for the new Niagara. So it's basically a system and location. Again, just plug the location. So this is the auto release. And then here we can say MS marker. And with that, we'll see that when we press play, come on, here we go. We can now press N and the marker will appear. Now, of course, we can now go ahead and it's playing with the sound and with the effect. The thing is that now we can place a billion of them and we only want one at a time, right? We, we don't want more. So what we can do is go into third person character and just create a new variable and be just a marker set, right? That we want. And this will be a boolean because it will be true or false. Now what we're going to do is basically on when we have hit something, we're gonna set marker to be true. Okay, so basically we have we are gonna spawn something and we have hit something, we're gonna set it to true. But at the beginning, we're gonna basically get the marker and make a branch. So if um it has already been created, what we're going to do is get an actor of class and we're gonna find our NS marker in the scene. Okay? Uh, sorry, NS marker no <laughs> location marker. And then if so, we are going to continue. But if not, if there's no marker set, we're directly just going to go ahead and continue. Now, of course, we want to set it to false. So right in here, we're also going to set it to false because now there's no marker. And I mean, it will be replaced instantly, but only if we hit something. You get the idea. So now if I were to hit play with this small variable change, if I press N, 
the marker appears. And if I press N again, okay, <laughs> of course, I, I'm stupid. I did get the actor from class, but we are now removing it. I forgot. So now what we can just do is get this and say destroy actor. Like this here, like this here. So now it will get it from the scene and destroy. Before I was just getting it without nothing. Just press N. And as you can see, now we are replacing it with the one before. So that's it, guys. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials, so go ahead and check them out. And now, just go ahead, bye bye.